Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Ways. Now, there has been a back and forth between the Ministry of Interior and the local government in the state on marriages conducted in the local government. Olamide Onifade, our in-house lawyer, <laughs> is going to break down all we need to know about marriages. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Africa one with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 Thank you so much, Olamide. Yes, please. For being our first <laughs> guest for today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, Lami. I, um, you know, we this came as a, at the, uh, on the back of um, Inheritance. A, a story that we, we found out uh, a woman lost her husband and all of a sudden from the hospital, it was a talk of war. The family started going at her and all of that. And you started saying that, oh, before we start to go all crazy and all of that, let's be sure whether we can actually fight her case legally. Mm -hmm. Now, break it down for us. You know, what do you mean by let's check if we can fight her case legally? Okay. First, when I hear of instances like that, the first thing I always ask is, were they married? The deceased person and the spouse, were they married? Now, if that answer is in the affirmative, the next question is, what kind of marriage? Because for every issue of inheritance, it's closely linked with the kind of marriage that was celebrated by the deceased person. So there's no way you can deal with issues of inheritance and take away marriage. So there are two kinds of marriage in Nigeria recognized by the Nigerian constitution, and none is superior to the other. But the only difference is that one affords more protection than the other. And the first is a statutory marriage, Okay. And the second is customary marriage. In statutory marriages, that is what we call church marriage or court marriage. Okay. There's nothing like that. It is statutory marriage, <laughs> or you can refer to it as a marriage under the act. Okay. Now, because it's a, it's a statutory marriage, it's just one, but you cannot decide to celebrate it at the registry or in a church. In church. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing like church marriage or for whatever church marries people, they are deriving their authority from the statute. From the law, yeah. Yes. Now, the next question is, is that person married under the law or customary law? Now, most of the time in customary marriages, it's unfortunate, but that's where we find ourselves in Nigeria. Once, if you're married under the law, sorry, if you're married under the customary law, you barely have any protection when it comes to inheritance. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the way our custom is. It doesn't recognize a widow inheriting anything. Wow. So for the southerners, I'll say the Yoruba speaking part of the country, they have, it's a bit for children, it always has to be, it, it could be a idigi, per stripes, meaning the number of marriages the man had or the number of children. He depends on how many, the, whichever option they want to. Yes. Yes. But female children are accorded the same respect as male children. So mm -hmm. it is true then that in Yoruba culture, inheritance is the fairest. It is very fair, okay. but excludes widows. Oh dear. Yes. For every culture in Nigeria, I am yet to see any culture that includes widows. For the eastern part, from the eastern part of the country, mm -hmm. they absolutely they don't even recognize female children. Everything goes to the male children. That is true. Widows, nothing. So even if the widows and the female children are even going to take anything, it's possess just possession. Their rights are just in possession. Well, I want to ask to you the question. pleasure of the male but members of the family. But if you say that under the statutory marriage, yes. right, the woman is protected. Yes. So even if she's from the east, which is supposed to go above each other? No, I'm, ge I'm getting back. Yeah. So if you're married under the customary, that's what will happen. So, but if you're married under the statute, the law protects the widow and the children. In fact, the widow has the highest percentage in the inheritance. What they use is the administration of estate law. And every state has it. Mm. But I'm not sure of the northern states, but I can talk about most of it. function under Sharia. Yes, but most states has it. So it's just a function of applying it. But if that, but all this can be avoided if you have a will. Right. So once you have a will, you make sure your children, your spouses, 
are protected. Mm. So now you were you were talking about um, the marriages at the registry and the Ministry of Interior and Local Government. Okay, let me tell you where the confusion comes in. In the Constitution, under the exclusive list, there are, there's what we call exclusive list, concurrent list, and residual. They are divided into three. So it means that under the exclusive list, these are things that it is only the uh, federal government that can legislate on it, to the exclusion of the local government and state. For concurrent, both state and federal can yeah. legislate on it. Mm -hmm. Then residual, they're basically for maybe state or local government. Now, under the constitution, mm -hmm. marriage is on the exclusive list. So formation of marriage, dissolution of marriage or anything marriage mm -hmm. is on the exclusive list. Then, but there's another confusion. In another part of the constitution, the government, um, the constitution says the local government can register. Hmm. So there's a difference between registering of marriage, registration of marriage, and forming or dissolution of marriage. So what the law should have done, I think there should be a kind of alteration to the, to the con constitution, so there will be a uniformity, yeah. kind of. What they're saying is, what the constitution is simply saying is, the federal government can legislate on the formation and dissolution of marriage. Then, so it means that if you go to the Ministry of Interior to get mm -hmm. married, and that, is, that function is carried out by the federal ministry, f sorry, federal registry of marriages, like the one you see in um, Ikoyi registry, yes. yes. For local governments do not have that power under any circumstance. There's no way you can stretch it. What you should do is, when you get married at the federal registry, then you take your certificate to your local government and register it, that's all. There's no confusion. Mm -hmm. Why do you, so, but why do you still need to register it at the local government? That's what I'm saying, that I think there should be an alteration to the constitution, so there's no, there's uh, no duplication that, yeah, and that all process. that. So we know who is doing what. So that's the, so for every local government that is marrying people today, I'm afraid that marriage is not... Recognized. Yes. So, if, so in case there's any issue, yeah. it means that you cannot even go legally. Well, as we speak, at the time, before the in Ministry of Interior and the local government went to court. It, people did not know what to do. But as we speak, what the ministry, they've gone to court and the court has pronounced that the Ministry of Interior mm -hmm. has the sole right, the exclusive right to perform marriages. Mm. So for people who are married under the local government, there's something called ratification. So what you can do is go to the Ministry of Interior, go to their website and apply. So you just need to give them their certificate from the local government and you amend then they will issue a new one which has to be under form E. Hmm. It has to emanate from the Ministry of Interior. Huh. Any other place you've gotten no, it. I mean, this one is confusion. No? It, that, I thought when I'm married. That's a complication. Because <laughs> I'm here thinking that ideally what, what we hear is um, that customary marriage is just, you know, household and kindred and all that, you get married. Mm -hmm. And if you go to local government, from local government up, it's like mm, proper statutory no. marriage. No, it's not a statutory okay, marriage. Okay, so I saw when I was doing my research, I saw something about um, the English common law, Islamic law and customary law. Yes. So from what you've said now, statutory would fall under the English common law. Yes. And while the customary is the customary law as yes. well. What happens to the Islamic... Um, well, for all intents and purposes, in Nigeria, we always group Islamic law with customary with customary awesome okay yes so it means Broadly. that whatever it is that covers the uh yeah so if you're married under the islamic law what would happen to you is um what will happen is whatever law that applies to islamic law will yeah. apply and i know for sure that the way they divide it female and male children get the same islamically the same. yeah no female children are recognized but they take half as much of male children and widows are entitled to something. In the Islamic law? Yes. Awesome. But under customary law, mm. widows are not. So the only protection you can give your widow in anticipation of death yeah. is to make a valid will. OK, so how about um, the situation? Because oftentimes we talk about the man, the man, the man. Now, we live in a time where women are working harder. They're building up empires and yeah. creating identity 
buying up assets for themselves. So what happens when a woman who has all these assets just dies without a will? No. It depends. <laughs> Most of the time, in, on the customer, it now depends on what kind of marriage. Okay. So you need, to, you need to know what kind of marriage. If it's under the customary marriage, it's the rule that applies to customer. Most of the time, the way they do it is, if that woman, any property she acquires before she goes into marriage, mm -hmm. will go to her kindred. Whoa, yeah. kindred is like immediate yes. family or extended a family, family. Yes, from a family. a family. Yes, yeah, yeah. siblings. Her siblings yeah. and all that. Okay. But the ones she acquires during, during the marriage, marriage. Mm. will go to the husband. So why is it not automatic no, no like that? For for it's not like that. You flip the side. So if you flip no. the coin now, no. it's not like that for the. No. So but what happens so, but, if okay. if it is now the man that dies? But she is the like the breadwinner. Cause we've seen cases of woman working hard, building a lot of you know things for herself and all of yeah, that. Yeah, most of the things but, in her name. But because no, but because okay. now, that's where I'm going. But because the properties are in her spouses and hers, you know their names, both their names. I mean, they begin to get and and probably the spouse now dies. The relative will also okay, come. Okay, there's hide. something we call the right of survivorship. If you and your spouse have a property jointly in your names, that property automatically devolves on the surviving spouse. Do you understand? So that takes care of it. So even a will cannot cater for that. Even under the customary law, it cannot cater for that. It's just for people to know what their right is. Do you understand? Mm. So if that, in that situation, if that property was jointly or properties were jointly owned by the deceased person and his spouse, it's so, but let me, in the, in the years of this right. um, legal business you've been doing, what are the common mistakes a lot of women make when it comes to taking decisions of marriage? Because we're trying to keep the side for the resolutions and all of that, dispute resolutions for our second guest. What do you think the common mistakes a lot of women okay, have yeah. made? A yeah. lot of people have, most of the time, they are married under the, cost, under the statutory law, but they don't take, um, when issues like this come up, they don't know. They're ignorant of their they rights. Thank you. The ignorant. A lot of people do not know that once you're, even if you're not, if there's no will to cater for the spouse and the children, you just need to approach the court for letters of administration. So what that does is that you have the right to administer the property of that deceased person. But it's, it's, an, it's in accordance with the administration of estate law of most of these states. So it, under that law, there's a way you have to divide the property. The widow gets the most mm. and the children. It, the only way the property will now devolve on the parents, because there's a scale of priority. So the first person under the law, under the administration of asset law that is recognized by the law is the widow. Then you go to the children. If there are no known children and no known spouse, then it devolves on the parents. Mm. If there are no parents alive, then it devolves on, par I'm sorry, siblings of full blood. Mm. If there are no known ones, then half blood. Half blood. Then it devolves all, all the, the way, way down. down. But the widow gets the priority. But a lot of people do not know. But that is only if you're married under the law. Mm. But right. if you're not married under the law, if you're married under the law, uh, customary law, I'm afraid yeah, the law, messy. there's a little the law can do. <laughs> so I'm saying, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's like because you know in the east you have all these marriage rights and all that and it's just funny how much people go through when they act in ignorance because most of these women who go through all this barb your hair uh my husband's people chase me out of the house they are legally married like church marriage wedding you pictures, shouldn't allow it and no. all that but they don't well, know how do you protect so, yourself i mean i think we're going to we're going to need the protection part for <laughs> Yeah. Our second lawyer coming on board, but it's yeah. actually very scary, Lamy. That okay, so the common mistakes a lot of women make is that they don't even know, they don't even so know that ignorance, right. you know. So, what well, I was linking, sorry, mm. that's why I linked the issue of marriage that you must ensure that your marriage in the first place is valid because part of all these family members, if they are aware that your marriage is invalid for one reason or the other, they can attack that marriage, they can challenge the validity of your marriage in the absence of the spouse that is late, mm. and they can win. And so you will be they found also, with nothing. Yeah, and sometimes if they, if they check and they see that you two don't know, even yes. if your marriage is valid, but because yeah. you are ignorant and they yeah. know that you are ignorant. Yeah. So, it, so it, means that, yeah, it means that the women, what you need to do, you need to put it in their faces, come, I know my yeah. rights. <laughs> Yeah. So most women listening to me, I will say to women listening to me, yeah. ensure that your marriage is valid. That's the starting point. Mm -hmm. And men, 
please make it real. Like oh. it's Protect just yes. In fact, it eases a lot of issues like letters because letters of administration is not cheap. Mm. It's not cheap and it's time consuming. Mm. But wheels, wheels is not. I think a lot of people find it a bit morbid to discuss it's issues. It's like I'm of, anticipating my death. No, but it's just <laughs> catering for the future. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that because you've catered for your future. It's just being proactive. That's it. No. Even yesterday when yeah. we talked about insurance, I mean, people just say, God forbid, God forbid. No. Life insurance, God forbid. But life would happen that, anyway. Life would happen. Absolutely life true. will happen <laughs> anyway. So why don't you just be proactive and... Sansi, you are the single lady here. I hope you are taking tips, writing all your notes down. Well, I, I then, did not yes, know sorry, marriage and, is this complicated. Sorry, then for, each, for people who get married under the law in churches, you need to be very careful. A, lot of, a number of churches in Nigeria today do not have their license. And every, any, any church that is going to celebrate a marriage ceremony must be licensed by the Ministry of Interior. Mm. Quite so a number of them. So it's not just any church? No, you need to ask for their licenses. Most of them are operating under expired licenses. Some of them don't even have at all. That marriage, for all intents and purposes, is invalid. It's dead on arrival. Okay, so yes. what about garden, the trending one, garden weddings? You, just, you need to get a license from the Ministry of Interior, from the marriage registry. They give you a certificate <laughs> for that. So if oh. you don't get that, but and somebody comes to celebrate okay, that marriage, we'll, is we'll not allowed. continue this conversation because I wow. hear that there are some wed marriages that you must have window and door. Yes, it, no, between... So garden wedding can, that she's talking about? No, 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 you can only say, if you all that um, requirement will be avoided if you ha if you take a license that you're doing an outdoor marriage, not in a licensed place of worship. Okay. So that certificate caters for that. Okay. You have to pay extra for that. Of course you do. All right. Then even if you are getting married in the church, you have to do it within the hours of eight a.m. and six with two witnesses minimum. Awesome. And the doors have to be opened. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> we'll know why later when we <laughs> come back from this break. Please stay with us. We'll still be talking yeah. about will and inheritances. We'll be right back.